Hello everyone, this is Mouse961, and today I'm bringing you the ninth episode of the Warp Drive tutorial series. In this episode, we'll be talking about the Transporter Room, which allows you to transport people, entity, and mobs across a distance. For this, you will need a Transporter Core, eight Transporter Containments, a Transporter Scanner, and optionally, a Transporter Beacon, but I do recommend it. And the initial setup you need, you have one Transporter Scanner in the middle, you have eight containments around it in a ring, and that is your teleportation platform. Over here you have the core, which has to have a frequency assigned using a tuning fork. All you have to do is walk up to a tuning fork, right click, and it should change colors. You then apply power to any of the sides. You apply a computer to another side, and just for my purposes I have the computer attached to a monitor. There's a lot of information on this screen, but it's all fairly simple. The very top line in gray is your signature, which is a unique ID given to every single transporter. Below that's your beam frequency, which is the frequency of the tuning fork you used. Remote location, that is the location that the transporter is linked to, and in this case it is that platform over there. It can also be set to an individual player, so you can target a player, and as long as they have the beacon in their hand, much like this one right here, it will lock onto the player name as long as they have the beacon in their hand. And just below that you have your energy factor, which we'll go into later. Energy required, the left hand side is the power required to lock, and the right hand side, which is 6673, is the power required to actually teleport. That must be kept for three seconds, which is the time it takes to actually energize. And below that is the energy stored, and finally, the bottom section is your information panel. The room is enabled simply means the system is turned on or off, or has power. To the right of that, locking is on hold means that it is not currently trying to lock onto a target. So if I actually come to this computer, and it says right down here, press L. So I'll press L to start locking, and what that does is it starts to align the particles in the two systems so that you can actually teleport from one place to another. We'll go into the percentages with that when we talk about the energy factor later on in the video. And lastly is the energize section. When you energize, that means that you are actively trying to teleport from one spot to another. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to press E since we have above 100%. So we'll just press E. It says requested is energizing, and we transported a skeleton. Note that the lock strength does go down after teleportation, and there is a cooldown for this. Also, if when you press E and something is teleported, the energize is then put back onto hold, so you're not constantly just teleporting back and forth. And here's our skeleton, and he is still being locked onto, so we'll press L once again to turn the lock off, and you'll see his particles go away. And we now have a dead skeleton just so that way he doesn't run away. Some upgrades for the core, and these are the objects that can be attached to the core. You have the Emerald Tune Crystal, which increases the range to a max of 8 crystals. The base range is 256 blocks, but for every crystal you add, that adds, an, adds another 64 blocks for a total of approximately 730. The other type of crystal is the capacitive crystal. You can have a maximum of eight, and it increases your energy storage up to four times. And lastly is the emerald tune crystal, which you can have two of them, and that will increase your lock speed 1.5 times. And now on to the percentages. This is the more difficult part, because there is some calculations that go into it. The lock strength anywhere from 0 to 10%, the teleporter will just not work if you try and energize between 0 and 10%. If you are between 10 and 65%, you will take 1,000 damage. If you are an entity, if you are a item, because you can transport items, the item will then catch on fire and burn. From 65 to 100, you will take less damage than if you are below 65, and you can work out how much damage you'll take with the equation there of 1,000 minus your percentage times 28.6. And lastly, you have 100 to 180 percent, you will take zero damage. Maximum lock strength calculation is... looks hard, but it's really not. You have 
two points, you have a start point and an end point. So as you saw behind me with the setup, you went from a transporter to the wild or wild to transporter. So for that one, you would take the 100 and you would add 25 because start and end and divide by 2, which is, I believe, 67.5. And that is your base strength. If you had a power factor of 100, that is what you would have. Uh, 67 is not a good number. You will still take a lot of damage and more than likely not be teleported. But if you increase your power factor, which the system back there was set to 1000, you have the bottom equation, which means your max lock strength is your base, plus the power factor minus 100 times 5 90ths. A much easier way to do this is simply hit the lock button, and if the number stops going up at a certain point below 100, just increase your power factor slightly until it is above 100 for very safe travels and no loss of items. And just some basic last notes, items can burn if the lock is too low. As stated before, the lock strength equals your chance to teleport. So even if you do have a 65% lock, that is only a 65% chance of you actually being teleported. The frequency of the tuning fork that you applied to the core allows you to pass through force fields. So if you have a large force field around your base and you want to teleport out of your base to the overworld, you will need to set the frequency of your force field to the same frequency as your teleporter core. And the teleportation can work from space to planet. That means that if you are, let's say, in the spawn system and you fly over one of the other planets, you can then go down to that planet. And the initial max range is 256, with a potential maximum of around 730. And my last note is that if you ever see a cloud like this, which is the angry villager cloud, that means that your setup is invalid or something is wrong. Usually it means that you are missing a block, so I'll just place the one block back. You'll see the white circle comes back because it is linked to my core, and there's no more angry clouds. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Also, there is the wiki if you so choose to go there. And have a great day.